Hello, I'm Rob, N1NUG. Today, I'm in Newington, Connecticut at the ARRL headquarters. It's a Saturday and they've opened it up for a Connecticut member social. So today we're gonna walk around tour the facility a little bit and talk to some Connecticut hams. While we're outside walking around in front of W1AW, I figured we'd take a quick pan of some of the towers that are here. I think there's three main towers on the lawn and one more on the HQ building. And there could be others hidden somewhere else on the campus I don't know about. Now, I don't know what all these antennas are, but there sure are a lot of them <laughs> and they are quite impressive. So after milling around outside for a bit, I bumped into Steve Goodgame, K5ATA, and he was nice enough to sneak me in and give me a sneak peek at the revamped W1HQ station that's inside the actual headquarters building. So, yeah, what are we, we okay, the, so this is the... Yeah, they installed a new patch panel. patch panel. Yep. And this is nice because it gives you an air gap. Yeah, and it's uh, everything goes up to the new tower on the roof. The old one was falling over. So oh, I see. Okay. New tower here. We've got the 9100 here. And then we've got flats on the other cabinet behind us. So 91, the power control up at the top. We've got the green hair and rotors here. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway. And then down here, what's that, power supply? So we've got a power oh, amp. We've got an amp, but amp the fan's fire. running nonstop, so we're not going to... Yeah. Right so we're going to run 100 watts. Yeah. And then here's the control. So this is the, the operating position yeah, the here, operating. <clears throat> or one of them. And so we've actually got it configured. We've got some new technicians in the building that they get a little bit of 10 meter privilege. In this station, the nice thing is you can use a personal call sign in here. Oh, okay. So, you know, like one of the guys that works in publications got his technician and he's interested in getting on the air. So we're going to get him in here. I mean, it's CQ worldwide, so he can work the world on 10 meters. Well, that's right. It's uh, contest weekend. Yeah, so yeah. he's like, I want to give it a shot. So Joe Karsha over at WNAW is nice enough to come over and get it get it ramped up for him. So we're on, on 10 meters now, so we're going to get him in here. And anybody who shows up that's a technician can get on the air. So. Oh, perfect. Cool. So the two control stations, can they operate independently? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So if, if I'm not mistaken, this is running off of the flex here. Oh, and I see. We actually have a third, which oh. I'd have to tell you, I'm, I'm not sure what their, the ultimate plan is here, but you know, like the, the, the idea of it is also not just a station, but you can see we've got the truss work up top so that we can mount overhead cameras and so, so that as we're doing product review stuff, we can do oh. some of that testing in here. Get it on the air and test it and, and show uh, it. And yeah, show nice. It. So, you know, and some, just some operating videos, if. We're going to start producing some operating stuff on like how to do different modes and stuff, so we have the ability to do that in here as well. So yeah, nice. And we got this nice big monitor here. Wow. Thank you, Papa Julia, so right next to the brand new and modern W1HQ radio room is sort of what I'll call the ARRL Radio Museum. This room is filled with preserved and restored gear from various eras of ham radio. I probably could have spent all day just checking out these radios since I am a fan of the older gear. But for now, we'll just kind of walk through and take a quick look at what's here. I got, uh, I've got this station at home, but mine's not quite as nice as that. R4B, look at all this cool stuff. The last time I was here, it wasn't set up like this. So it's nice that they, they kind of put it all together as like a, a station would be, maybe. Well, it's, you know, when I bring my teachers through here, I bring them through from the other end first. <clears throat> oh, yeah, And yeah. I bring them through and I tell them it's kind of like a time tunnel. Oh, you, right. You come right. through here and it's all this old-timey stuff, and then you get, we end in W1HQ with the, with the new vision stuff. of the modern or yeah. futuristic station, I guess. Yeah, this is cool stuff. I like the old stuff. Yeah, we like the old stuff, but kids like the new, new stuff. Oh, I like the new stuff too. Don't mix. get me wrong. Don't <laughs> so. get me wrong. I like them both. Yeah. Oh, I got a couple of these at home too. Just got to find some time to work on my stuff. Now, one of these days I'll get one of these since I work for the company. Next, we bumped into W1RFI, Ed Hare, who is the engineering manager at ARRL. 
He was nice enough to do a quick walkthrough of sort of the test room where all the radios are tested and then talked a little bit about some of the engineering projects that ARRL has done over the years. In this room, by the way, we get about 100 dB of isolation from the outside world. Uh, one of the reasons we do a shielded room is when W1AW is on the air, uh, we wouldn't be able to do sensitive equipment testing. There'd be too much RF going around. But if you close that door right there, it's also well shielded that for the first time in your life, there'd be no radio photons passing through you. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And you know, we have a, a nice battery of test equipment. When we do, a, a, say, a full-blown, all-mode uh, HF rig, typically it takes about a week to 10 days of testing to do all of the, uh, um, the measurements that we make on it. We then condense that down, put it into the magazine and the product review column. Now, what we do is we lock the test engineer in here, we slide food under the door, <laughs> and then we let him out. <laughs> yeah, right. Can't come out till you're done. And uh, should have introduced myself at first. I'm Ed W1RFI, the lab manager here. So over here are some of the projects that we've worked on in the lab over the years. You know, many, many years back in QST, almost everything you saw in QST originated in the lab. And we've actually gotten a little bit away from that for a lot of good reasons. Uh, I remember it was years back, it's over here. I designed a frequency counter for the ARRL handbook. It took about three or four months from start to finish and paying a lab engineer, that was a pretty expensive project. <laughs> well, the next year the manufacturer discontinued all the parts. Redesigned it, new parts. Next year the manufacturer discontinued all of those. And, and over time it, it came to, I came to realize is that you know, almost anybody could design a frequency counter. At least there's a lot of hams out there that could. We'd publish it in the handbook and, oh my goodness, they'd be des delighted. We'd pay, pay them a page rate. That frees up the lab staff to do things that others can't do. So at this point, I'm now working with IEEE. I'm working with the, uh, the National Standards Committees on RFI, uh, bringing amateur radio to those big tables where it's really important that we be represented. And ARRL is best positioned to do that, whereas Many hams could design a frequency counter. Now next, I spent a little time in the lobby and didn't take really any video while I was in there, but talked to a few people there, including David Minster, who is the CEO of the ARRL and was responsible for setting up this event in the first place. Anyway, after that, I headed out across the Diamond Terrace, took a look at some of the bricks on the ground that people had purchased through the Diamond Club, and then headed over to the Ham Aid booth, which was set up in the corner of the parking lot. Ham Aid Dough Kits, uh, this happens to be one with a 73, ICOM 7300 in it. Um, I've got the laptop set up, but it's not sh oh, run, running it. But we've got the capability to run Winlink. Uh, actually, been been doing some testing with uh, FT8 on it. Okay. Now, are these the ones that you deploy when there's some yes. sort of a disaster yes. or whatever? Most of our kits have the 7200 in them, have mm -hmm. an ICOM 7200 in them, which, which with the ruggedized radio is a really a really good radio for deployment. But then we've got some that have the 7300 in them. Now, do you also, I see there's a VHF radio. Right. Does the kit have that too? Some kits have a VHF kit component. Some kits just are VHF, and okay. then some kits are just HF. So okay. it kind of depends on what the what the requesting party's asking for. I see. And then we have some, like I said, we have some that are just two separate kits yeah. that we can deploy as well. Nice. So how does somebody, like there's some sort of a disaster, do you guys just respond or do you get a request? I get a request from, <clears throat> it usually comes through the section manager. Okay. Um, or possibly the section emergency coordinator in each, uh, in each section. Yeah. Um, as to what, what they're requesting, what they need. Um, okay. We do have some kits deployed around the country pre-deployed. Um, there are kits deployed in Florida, Texas, um, Alabama, Louisiana, I believe, are the state where, the, where we have some pre-deployed. Right so now. they're there because that's... They stay there yeah. because they're potential, you know, they're, they're fairly high risk. That makes sense. Um, so for instance, during Ian, we didn't deploy any from here, but they did did utilize some of the kids that we had pre-deployed during they had enough to, and, they, and yeah. operators and, 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 oh, and wow. uh, between that and, and you know people around not not in the directly affected areas that their home stations were still up and running and functioning okay so yeah interesting yeah it's definitely a good program and it wasn't something that i was aware that awrl even right, did right until the and first it, time i came here it's for a, a completely tour. separate program so it's 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 funded 
it's not funded with with our day-to-day -day operations dollars. It's funded with donations specifically to Hammond. Oh, okay. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, then. That's and, new. And, okay. And the other thing that, that I've and I've had this request recently. Um, it, there are absolutely zero uh, administrative costs to it um, because any out of the handmade program. So if you make a donation to handmade, it's 100% handmade. Um, all any administration that we have for the program is actually done just from our day to day people that are already here working doing other things anyway. So, oh wow, that's nice. So we, we have zero admin cost in the handmade. Program. So it just goes into the equipment. Yeah, it goes into yeah, the equipment okay. fund. 100%. Excellent, excellent. Well. It's a good, wor worthwhile mm -hmm. yeah, cause to donate program, to, for sure. So. Next, I took a walk across the parking lot and visited the W1AW building. And that, of course, is where the ARRL broadcasts are transmitted from. But there's also a few operating stations inside the building for visitors to come and operate if they want to. Now, this tour, admittedly, would be a lot better if we had Joe NJ1Q who runs W1AW conducting it, but I'll do my best to summarize what's here. When you first walk in the lobby over on the left, there is sort of a trophy case full of old ham radio memorabilia from the founding days of the ARRL, including some old radio gear and even items like the Woof Hung. <laughs> That's something you're going to have to look up on your own. There's an interesting story behind that. Now, opposite the trophy case, there's an old transmitter, I believe, that was used in the W1AW service. But then even next to that under glass, there is an old, what I believe to be, spark gap transmitter of some sort. And I think this thing still works. When I visited in 2015, this thing was up and running and I got a demo of it. But of course it wasn't operational today. And then over on the other side of the lobby is Hiram Percy Maxim's personal desk. Now these two Collins transmitters that are on there, I don't believe were his, but the desk there certainly was. Now, I don't believe the desk was original to this station. The ARRL was able to acquire it at one point along the way when some heirs of Hiram Percy Maxims donated it back to the ARRL. Now, when entering the main room of the W1AW building, over on the right in sort of a glass enclosed room are the transmitters for the W1AW bulletins. Now, there's also a few pieces of test gear and a patch panel in here as well. I'm going to have to come back on another day when it isn't so crowded and Joe has more time to go through and show us exactly what all this stuff is in here. Directly across from the W1AW transmitters is the main operating console where all the broadcasts and bulletins can be put together. Over on the other side of the room, there are three separate studios, each studio having two radios inside. And this is where hams can come visit and operate W1AW if they choose to. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do next. So what do you got set up? You got uh, 17 and 10? Yes, and, and as long as nobody else is here, okay. there's, there's, a, uh, there's a rotator for you. Oh, wow. Okay. So then we got, uh, we've got 15 meters here, and we got 12 meters here. This is set up running FT8. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 okay, I'll check on you a few minutes, make sure you're okay, or ask anybody we'll help you. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. 59001. So at this point, I chose to operate 10 meters since I figured it would be open. And since it was the CQ Worldwide Contest weekend, I knew there'd be stations out there to talk to. Anyway, I hopped on and started calling CQ and then promptly realized after making my first contact, I didn't know what the contest exchange should be. So I stopped and asked my guide if he could give me a hand with that. I was trying to look it up on my phone, but not getting anywhere. On my first contact, I ended up giving the other station a serial number instead of my CQ zone number, which was the correct exchange. <laughs> oh well, it'll get sorted out in the logs, I suppose. The contest that's on, I don't know what the exchange is. Huh. They're, they're given a number, but it's not a serial number, so I'm just trying to look it up. It's CQ oh. Worldwide, right? I think. I didn't pay any attention to it. Yeah, I'm not sure either. DQ zone number. Is that what they want? Yeah, it's uh, whatever our zone number is. Zone 5. Zone 5? 
Okay. And your response is 595 or 5905. Yeah, like I said, I saw something this morning that said it's contest weekend. Oh, well, we'll playing yeah. stations. I didn't think of the good, uh, good, exchange. Good, good. Okay. All right. Good question. <laughs> Thanks. Whiskey one alpha whiskey. Five nine five. Now the band ended up being pretty crowded with contesters, and I'm not really a contester, so I decided to try and find a clear frequency and just call CQ and make a few casual contacts instead of trying to chase contacts in the contest. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? CQ, CQ, CQ. Whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey. Whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey. Calling CQ. QSL, Kilo Charlie 5 Echo Victor Uniform, is that right? Okay, QSL, got it that time. There was a little QRM. You're 5-9 uh, you're here into Connecticut. Okay, QSL, well, it's working for you. I'm running the ARRL uh, Whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey station, so I don't know what the antenna is, but it's up on a tower and it's big. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, you're doing good here cutting through the uh, the contest stuff. Okay, QSL, yeah, you sound good here too. Uh, the rig I'm running is an IC9100. Uh, I think there's a Heil mic here or whatever, but uh, but yeah, they've uh, they've got a little bit of an open house here today, so I'm just guest operating for a few minutes, and uh, I'm sure somebody else will be uh, jumping in right behind me here. Okay, seven three, and thanks for the contact. Uh, appreciate it. We'll look for you again soon. Uh, whiskey one alpha whiskey. Uh, QRZ CQ CQ whiskey one alpha whiskey whiskey one alpha whiskey. We're calling CQ and standing by. Kilo Bravo One Oscar Yankee Bravo Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. How you doing, John? Yeah, I just had to turn the antenna up your way. I figured uh, I'd try and make a contact with you here, but uh, but I won't keep it long because I'm going to make a few more and then I'm going to uh, get out of here. There's a lot of people waiting to make contacts. Seven Three John Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. So here's the operating position. That radio is on 17. I opted to use this radio. It was on 10. 10's been open, plus this is more familiar to me than the other radio since it's a lot like my 746. As you can see up here on the log, I made three contacts, a couple of uh, what I'll call DX, and one to my buddy John. <laughs> it was just a couple of towns away. Now, I didn't get any video of the parking lot festivities, but the staff put on a nice spread of hamburgs, hot dogs, and some other sort of like picnic food for all of the guests to enjoy while we mingled and talked and swapped radio stories. And that's pretty much what I did for the rest of the time I spent down there. So having said all that, I want to thank the ARRL staff for coming in on a Saturday and opening up the grounds for all of us Connecticut hams to check out and even providing us with some great food. Now there's a lot more to the ARRL than I was able to show in this video. And hopefully I'll be able to get back down to the building when things are a little bit less hectic, bring a little bit better camera gear and show some of that to you guys. In fact, if there's anything in particular that you want to see, let me know down in the comments section and I'll see what I can do to make it happen. So I had a good day here at the ARRL. Got to see some stuff, got to operate W1AW, talked to a bunch of people, met some old friends I haven't talked to in a while and uh, Enjoyed a little bit of uh, hamburgs and hot dogs here on the grill. So overall a good day. Now, if you guys want to learn more about ARRL, make sure you check the links in the description. Thanks for watching.